I have loved the evil way Spit out my love in every way Yet I'm still well I can get fine. in the yard <laughs> of the king I like the blend, the red blend. Uh, okay, well, uh, welcome to Talking Shop. Uh, we are all here together, the whole crew. Tim, Ernie, Matt, and myself, I'm Paul, and... Uh, we'll get Ernie's name tag later. <laughs> we, uh, we have a great, great text. Um, it's, uh, you know, when, when people think of parables in general, they think are usually one of two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Either the. Uh, um, oh no! Nope, you uh, can only think of one. The servant in the ditch. <laughs> yeah, in the, the ditch. Guy, the, the good uh, Samaritan. Good Samaritan. Yeah, 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 yeah that guy. Yeah. Or they Obviously think of this one, one. Yeah. Of. Uh, which is uh, usually called the prodigal son. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about how that might be sort of a misnomer. It is uh, part of the text, but it's definitely not the whole text. Maybe not even the point of the text. Uh, but chapter 15 from Luke's Gospel, and the <clears throat> reading as is assigned does the first three verses and then skips to verse 11. Uh, and so maybe if somebody could kind of talk a little bit about those first three verses, how it sets up our text. What's happening in, in Luke 15, 1 to 3? Pharisees are disgruntled. Disgruntled Pharisees. Disgruntled Pharisees. Because they're with uncleanliness, right? They're, they're or Jesus should we say hanging. Jesus yeah. is hanging with uncleanliness? Yeah, so right. uh, it's it's a lot like the uh, the woman who uh, in you'll get a little bit later in Luke the the uh, the woman who anoints him, right? right. And uh, if you knew who she was, you would not let her touch you. Right. And he's eating with and, sinners, big yeah. deal, right? Because of hospitality in the Middle East, hospitality rules. And it's, you, know, you it, let somebody into your house, you, they're, you, they're basically a part of your family. They're under your protection yeah. and your care. And okay. the Greek there is actually eating with, communing with, right? right. Um, mm -hmm. So. And then he tells three stories of lost stuff. Okay. To go yeah. after him. Right. So, so... In many ways, the parable is directed at those who are grumbling yes. that God he would done. sit and eat with sinners, yes. right? Tax collectors with sinners, that he's doing that. And so this parable, which, as I said, is famous, um, will provide some difficulty in preaching, not because it's not rich. It's, in, in other words, it's easy to preach, already know but it. it might be hard because, once again, it's very familiar. Uh, yeah. Everyone kind of, you know, when you read this on Sunday morning, uh, people go, Oh, I, I know what we're yeah. going to be talking about today, right? Well, and there's there's also so much. I mean, all of it can connect back, but you can very quickly disconnect it from that context in which it's told. Yes. Of Jesus eating with sinners, yes. speaking this to those who are holier than thou, right? Mm -hmm. Right, uh, which is... Speaking, speaking to the pious crowd. Which is, um, you know, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, is why I was sort of suggesting that maybe to simply refer to this as the prodigal son might be a bit of a misnomer because because of that context. Yeah. It, you know, he's he's not the only focus of this no. parable. Certainly not. Um, and so, so let's go into it. So he begins, uh, he says, there's a man uh, who's got two sons, right? And, um, and it begins with the younger of the two. Uh, and what is his desire? What does he want? Maybe even more importantly, what would that mean, especially in their day, for him yeah. to do this? What does he want? He wants his bios. He wants his his Bion. chunk of his of his father's life. Property. Yeah, literally. So now, good uh, translation point here. Most translations, I think, just speak of his property, right? Yeah, he wants a share of property. They, they translated bios <clears throat> as property. Yeah. yeah, and so, but bios. Means life far his more than life. That. Yeah, his yeah. life, his like, livelihood, right? Right. Um, and there's always the, this point. I mean, we would even recognize this today, but um, that division doesn't happen until you're dead. Yes. And so, the son's basically saying, "There's nothing more for me here. I want you to die yeah. so I can have my, my stuff. stuff." Yeah, that's huge. Um, it shows you how. <laughs> Basically, how bad the kid Just is. Imagine if we did that. Yeah, yeah. dad. You know, right. yeah. Uh, go ahead, go ahead and be dead. Go ahead and be dead. Yeah, yeah. Because we just want your oh, stuff. Oh, right? yeah. no. And so it it highlights though, uh, yeah. kind of understanding that, or maybe impressing that upon your people when you preach, is that uh, it highlights. It wasn't like this guy was just misguided. He was a jerk. Yeah, flagrant. And he 
he blatantly would rather have his dad dead so he could get his share of the stuff yeah. uh, than to live under his, his roof anymore. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it, he's not a nice guy, no. right? <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, the shocking, the first shocking thing, the shocking, maybe shocking throughout is the action of the father. Yeah. This father is the hero of the story. Without a doubt. Which is why many preachers I've heard call this the parable of the prodigal father, father. not the father, not the prodigal son, yeah, but yeah. nonetheless. Um, I know uh, my buddy Scott uses this when he talks about uh, men in general, and he always uses, he, he says uh, uh, something like a, a story of two sons with a father in the middle, and it's the father that's the linchpin to this whole thing, mm-hmm. right? Um, what he's doing with these boys, but uh, but yeah. So the shocking, first shocking thing is he actually does it. Mm-hmm. He kind of okay, takes account of everything, divides it, and it, and he actually divides it between his sons. Here's your share. To his old son, apparently gives him his share. We don't know what that exactly looks like, but he gives him his sons, his younger son, the share, and he hits the road. Uh, and it's what happens out there that becomes the next big piece of the yeah. Uh, just a just a note because I've heard it in a in a commentary um, that uh, that works with a lot of uh, rabbinic literature. There was actually a place where, if you're in the Galilee, where we assume this is where Jesus is is, uh, is speaking of this, there actually is a far away land, but it's not that far off. It's the Decapolis <laughs> on the other side huh. of the. That's what they where the Gentiles lived was the far, far land, okay. um, or the far country. And, and clearly. <clears throat> I guess we could say that this is Gentile land. Yeah, I mean he's yeah. I mean up, he's, he, he ends, ends up feeding pigs. Feeding pigs. Yeah. So yeah. there's uh, uh, this is where he goes, uh, right. and and he goes there, and he apparently he's having a pretty good time, living extravagantly, extravagant living. Mm-hmm. And you could kind of let your mind wander, <laughs> Beth. Uh, yeah. Certainly, his older brother has some thoughts about how he mm-hmm. spent his time. Mm-hmm. Well, there's uh, a couple notes we found on that extravagant living, or the ESV uses uh, reckless, the the ostos. Um, or asotos, um, that it appears in Proverbs 28.7. Yeah. Um, and it talks about um, the one who lives shamefully or the one who lives recklessly um, shames his father. Yeah. And, um, and then there was also a note on it from Second Maccabees where they're describing the temple worship around that time. And they're talking about bringing in the, uh, the cult prostitutes and all of these kinds of things and defiling the temple. Yeah. Um, and so you can get some connections there or some pictures, word pictures of, of yeah. that word. Base living, living hedonistic living, yeah. you know, those kind of things, I think, uh, um, you know, yeah. is what he's out there doing. And he has a great time. Until. Until. Until what? Famine. Until the world no passes comida. away. No, no mas comida. <laughs> yeah, famine in the land. Uh, he hasn't... You know, it's interesting. He hasn't exactly secured for himself good friends with all this extravagant living uh, interesting. That, that might help him out. You know, he ends up on his own. Alone. And now yeah. in, a, in a foreign land, in a strange land. And yeah. unites himself, right? I think the, the Greek can even be glues himself, yeah, glues himself to yeah. that country, ties himself to yeah. those who are living there and becomes uh, uh, indentured, you might say, almost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a last gain of Corvus, a feeder of pigs. A yeah. feeder of pigs. Wow, yeah. you've practiced that. Yeah. <laughs> I just read it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he, he, that's what his job is. So, um, again, uh, some of this would be missed on, on most of our folks probably, but that, I mean, these are unclean animals through and through, and now his job is to care for them, yeah. to feed them. Right, and and he's so destitute that he's longing to even share in their food. They're being better cared for than he is. Yeah. Now, yeah. so at this point, I I don't know. If your churches are vastly different than mine, but I, you know, a lot of my folks, uh, a lot of our people would say he's getting exactly what he deserves. Mm. This is a man who wanted his father dead. Um, to just have his yeah. If you lead him down that road, if you can convince him that he's that much of a jerk, yeah, yeah that man yeah. he get he's getting what he deserves. This is a comeuppance. Um, 
You know? Mm. Yeah. He's spending all had a good he's time. He's that guy you don't like who's getting exactly what you hoped he would. That's yep. exactly right. But <laughs> that's where the I think the lens of as you look at this text, it's all about that that grumbling. Yeah. And it goes back to uh, when we grumble so much that we fail to see the big picture of what this is all about in a sense of being brought low. So that's the the grumbling at the Pharisees and the Yeah, scribes they fail to see and yeah, understand yeah. the same same condition and what that and we look at just a little bit later there with the father, you know, that whole David moment or Nathan moment uh, where he would confess his sins against God and and also you. And I think that's where, like, the grumbling really is cut, hmm. um, where it does or should convict the hearts of yeah, the, the all di- people. The difference is between the jerk out in the world who is, is just being out there and the jerk who becomes broken. Yeah. And walks into your presence. Yeah. Right? Because yeah, that's the turn, um, right? He remembers who he is. Yeah. He, he comes to literally, himself. Literally. The, the text says he the remembers who he is. Yeah. 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 He comes to himself. And so he, and, he comes to himself and he, and he realizes, man, back home, you know, the servants. Yeah. He doesn't even come to himself and realize who he is. He comes to himself and realizes he is less than who he was. Right. And I think that's even more significant. Yeah. Um, I, I am, I am, I am not even worthy to be yeah. put back into that status. I dehumanized because, myself. Yep, yep. Yeah. I've, uh, I've become the worst of the worst. Right. Um, in this case. And so he, now he knows it. So this is truly <laughs> at this point, just like those tax collectors and sinners eating with Jesus, these are, re- this is a repentant son. Yes. Right. This is a son who's turned back towards his father. Right. But doesn't think that he deserves anything from it right I, I think it it is the word juxtaposes that just sure. sounds nice yeah. that sounds good. Um, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a real word that's, we'll yeah, find out a, we'll a, find out whether it's the right word or yeah. um, going. but it, it, <laughs> it, it well it juxtaposes the again the i think of the why were the pharisees uh, uh why were they grumbling because of their you know, we, we could see it as their self righteousness, right? Their uh, sure. their legalism and their holiness, and and again, it. I think when we talk about uh, being brought low, I think on the opposite side, that grumbling and that self righteousness uh, fails to see um, uh, what this what this is all about. That Jesus eats with or identifies with sinners in a sense of being with yeah. them. So it. Yeah. I mean, can you yeah. analogize the older brother as the Pharisees? Is that, is you that, have to. Is that safe? Yeah. I, yeah, I think that's where it's going. I think so in the context you can. So, you know, that jumped too much. He goes back. He he kind of, you were saying when we translated, he even kind of rehearses what he's going to say. Yeah. Like, I'm going to go back. I'm going to tell Dad, you know, I don't deserve this. I'm not worthy of Father, this. Father, I have sinned See, against heaven, or I have sinned <laughs> against, uh, to heaven and against you. you. I am right. no longer worthy to be called your son. That's right. Treat me as one of your hired servants yeah. is, the, is yeah. the, uh, what he rehearses. So, so he goes, he rehearses it, he gets home, um, and the whole scene is just full of gospel, right? Yeah. His father sees him from a long way off. I mean, so it's not even, there's no begging, there's no groveling on your no. knees. He does Who's the first one who basically kind of falls on the other? It's the father who well, falls yeah. upon the The father doesn't son. even wait for him to come. Yeah. His son Runs has turned, and he immediately goes after his son. You get this picture um, of the dad kind of, like, sort of like every day is kind of checking out, and yeah. this is the day finally he sees his son yeah, looking yeah. down the coming, road. And, coming up yeah, in fact, I, yeah. I saw a picture of that. Is you can almost imagine the father walking out of his house every day and looking to that distant yeah. land yeah. and hoping that his son is on the horizon. And this day, there he is, right? Day, he he is. rushes to him, yeah. Well, even that, that picture of the father of the, the Splankna, right? The Espla, Splagnix, mm-hmm. they? Uh, yeah. yeah. That Splankna, that, that yeah. deep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not just like, oh, I have compassion for you. Right, no, you this, know? Is yeah. a, this is, uh, like, yeah. Yeah, his body kind of full on. Yeah. Full. for this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, full, he, deep compassion. He go, He falls about him. He begins his rehearsed line. Mm-hmm. Father, I have sinned against heaven, against you. I am and, no longer worthy to be called your son. Stop. And before he can, he had a whole plan, just let me work. Mm-hmm. Before any of that, the father intercedes, and he puts, puts the, uh, the, the, the stole. stole on him, the, <laughs> yeah. the, the robe, the, 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 the ring that, on his finger. Yeah. I mean, gives him this title back, the Get shoes on his feet, everything language, yeah. that he would have had the whole time. In other words, he, he, he dresses him back. As his son, yeah. in every aspect, with all the blessings that brings, 
This is who he is. And the big one is that ring. It's only used here in the New Testament, but but if you take it back and, and connect it even with the rings of the Old Testament, the Hebrew, it's a signet ring. It's the yes. ring that shows that you are an heir to the family fortune and that you actually speak for the family even. Right. Which is incredible, right? That you've got this son who said, I don't want any part of you, and the father says... And interesting, yeah. And there's no, like, proving time. No. It wasn't like, listen, we're going to put you in charge of the... Build some trust. The cows for a while. We're going to see how that works. rework your integrity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just immediate (laughs) uh, restored to this status. Yeah. Um, And now... (laughs) And now, so, again, I think as if you're preaching this text... Your people are going to hear that. They're going to probably see themselves. I'm this sinner. I've come back to my Lord. Uh, he's welcome me. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. It's not the end of the story, no. right? Uh, and and maybe isn't the the thrust of it. These are the the uh, tax collectors and sinners that Jesus is eating with. That's the son who's come back. Now let's address the real problem: the older son, mm-hmm. right? So the old, older son's out. He's working. He's faithful. He's doing what he always does, right? Yeah. Um, he's the guy who should have the big celebration. Obeying the Father's he's commands. Always day obeys, and night. Yeah, basically the Father's commands. And uh, so he hears the ruckus. He gets he calls one of the uh, hired hands. Uh, says, what's going on? He said, hey, your son, uh, not your son, your brother has returned, right? And your father, you know, has... has um, Slaughter the, the, the fattened calf, right? And they're celebrating. And what does he do? He uh, blows the gasket. He gets angry. He blows the gasket. Yeah. <laughs> he gets angry. Yeah. I don't even yeah. Gotta go. And, and again, <laughs> where's my party? The, the incredible action of this father who goes now out into the field. So, I mean, he's you kind of get this. He's having a party here, celebrating the return of his son. His mm. older son won't come. Now he goes out to him too, right? And he tries to bring him in, right? Uh, and you, you got some great wordplay here, uh, I think, where uh, mm. this uh, this brother calls doesn't call the younger one his own brother, no. but calls him your son, the son of yours, right? The- he did these terrible things. Yeah. The son of yours who ate up your life yeah. with Consumed evil living. Life. Yeah. It's that disassociation yeah. with his brother. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. When, when, you know, when you do that with your own family, like your son, when you talk to yeah, your wife right. about that. <laughs> like, your do you know your son? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. There's a disconnection there. Yeah. He's, he, yeah. he has... Want nothing that, to do that with That younger his son said, you're dead to me. And so his older brother said, fine, you're dead to me then too. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And eat uh, your life with evil. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Eat your life away with evil. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And uh, and the the father won't let it go. Mm-hmm. Um, he won't allow. Oh, maybe that's right. I mean, he won't he he won't allow that animosity to be the final word. Whether yeah. or not the son comes to the party, maybe that's not out. That's outside the father's control, but. That animosity, or that because of his the younger brother's sin, should therefore mean some sort of distant separation. He just won't allow it. No, the father says this is not. This is well, an and it's the father's words where he describes him as you know he was he was dead alive. He was he was destroyed. Well, and yeah. he was destroyed. But but look at okay. look at this yeah. too. Yeah, exactly. The older son is is angry with his brother. But if you kind of read the context of it, he's really angry with his father. father. Yeah, that his father right? would show mercy yeah. to his brother. To his brother. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's why that's why the father changes his words when he's then talking to the older son, and it's no longer son of mine; it's now beloved child. Technon. Right. Yeah. Technon. Yeah. Um, and I know the English doesn't do that, but but the father changes his language. So that he can speak into the heart of this son. This is you're my who child, is angry. right? Yeah, yeah. and uh, and that he again entreats him back in, and he says, and he corrects, in other words, him. He, he goes, "This isn't just my son no. who's returned. This is your brother, right? Right. You belong in this celebration, right? 
um, that this is all part of us uh, rejoicing together. And so if you go, if you back all the way up to the context, the setting of those uh, Pharisees and scribes who are sitting on the outside grumbling yeah. at, at the, the welcoming of Christ to these sinners, um, you see it here played out. What, will that older son come to the party? Yeah. He's, invited, he's, inviting <laughs> he's inviting them invited. in. This and the father has you gone too. to him yeah. said, listen, this is for, you've always been there. You've been faithful. Come rejoice. Come celebrate. But when, when you realize it was never about you and it's about what the father has done for you, yeah. you will celebrate. But when you think you play a part in this, uh, you'll have that angst to say, I, I don't want to I don't want to go to that party because yeah. I, I should have deserved that too. I, I think that's the, the crux of it in huh. a sense of they're grumbling, the, right. the Pharisees. Yeah. They, at the a- end any, of the day, yeah. it's the Father who does any, all any, things. Anytime you think the bios is yours, the life, yeah, yeah, you've yeah. made a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, great, yeah. Yep. So yeah, it's, it's powerful, right? I mean, it's a great way to bring that home you know, that how often in, uh, in our lives do we do that? We start to play this role that this is actually about us. This is about my contribution, yeah. my work, my effort, and... Um, and, uh, and about how much better I am than him. whoever else I've consumed to less of your life than he consumed. Right. Yeah. Thank <laughs> and God I'm right. not like him. Yeah, yeah that's right. So, and yeah. I've worked for my share of the life. Right. And yeah. I've always been there when you've, uh, when yeah. you've asked. And yeah, so... Didn't you um, give me a little goat? Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I've got so to go. so the the prodigal son sets up really uh, the main question, which is what what's going to happen with the the older son, yeah. right? The faithful son. Um, will he rejoice in the grace of his yeah, father? Yeah. The younger son's story is complete. This yeah, is done. Uh, he's restored. And, yeah. 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 And if you want, I mean, if you want to make other connections to it, this is Jonah at the end of uh, Jonah chapter four when God says. Am I not allowed to have mercy? Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. Jonah's all angry and upset, yeah. and it just stops right there. Right. Right. It, just it doesn't mm-hmm. doesn't go any yeah. farther. So yeah, it leaves that open ended. What's What's Jonah gonna do? What's the older son gonna do? Which leaves um, a great preaching wise moment where you can jump right to the people sitting right. before you, and what are you gonna do? Yeah. Right. That he continues to act this way. Yeah. Your father your loves you whether you're inside or outside, and wants yeah. everything for you. Right. 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 Um, yeah, good. All right, uh, great conversation. Uh, check out crafterpreaching.com. Lots of good stuff there. Uh-